What's going on everyone? My name is Jasmine. On today's episode of The Slain Project, we're going to be talking about the murder of 58-year-old Sally Hines. The only thing ever found of her remains was her head, and the most logical suspect in this case is her husband, but after researching this case, it is possible that someone else from her inner circle did this to her. Don't forget to check out my other videos, and if you want to see more videos on missing and murdered Indigenous people, click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Now let's get right into it. Sally Hines was a member of the Seekong Wapanog tribe of Rhode Island. This is a small tribe with native roots in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, but is currently only recognized by the state of Massachusetts. They are currently fighting to be recognized by the state of Rhode Island and at the federal level. When Sally was about 23 years old, she married a man named Harold Hines. They had a daughter named Kelly and the family settled in San Antonio, Texas. Sally began working at USAA, which is a financial institution. She worked her way up to senior software engineer. But at some point, Sally began having a series of health problems. She was diabetic and was also diagnosed as bipolar, had PTSD, and manic depression. She also had a liver transplant that resulted in several hospitalizations. She was also required to take a very important anti-rejection medication for her new liver. By the time 2017 rolled around, Sally was 58 years old and had been on long-term disability from her job for almost 10 years, and her husband Harold said that he paid about 50000 to 60000 in medical debt by this point. The couple's marriage was also strained by domestic issues and Sally moved out of the family home, but she would often return to visit Harold. According to her sister Barbara Gauthier, Sally moved out and had a roommate. Her wording implied that this was a man, but she was not involved with him romantically. She said on the night Sally vanished that she had a disagreement with her roommate so she left to go visit Harold in the 5600 block of Timber Steep in Northwest San Antonio. This detail about Sally's roommate is not often discussed in articles about her case, but almost every detail about her disappearance, discovery, and resultant investigation is shrouded in mystery. That night, Harold called 911 to his home for a wellness check. Sally was having mental health issues and the ambulance and police showed up. Harold told investigators that he last saw Sally at about 3 a.m. on December 14, 2017. He said Sally was leaving to meet up with someone. He went to bed and when he woke up later in the day, she was nowhere to be found. Sally had also left behind her car, purse, phone, and life-saving medication that was very important for her to take. An article by Law and Crime states that Harold said she left on foot. I am not sure if he actually seen her walk away or this was concluded because her car was left behind. Sally was known to self-medicate and when Harold did not hear from her for a couple days, he just assumed she was still out doing alcohol or drugs because she had left like that before. Before she vanished, Sally's family had tried to intervene and get her the help she needed. They attempted to fly her back home, but she refused. Because of Sally's medical condition, she could not walk long distances. So if she did indeed leave to meet someone, they would have had to be nearby or someone would have to pick her up at some point. Christmas came and went and the weeks plugged along and there was not any word from Sally. Without her anti-rejection medication, her life was in danger. I could not find a definite time frame for how long she could survive without the anti-rejection medication, but every missed dose would put her more in danger. There were pleas in the media from her family for Sally to reach out, but they were met with silence. Sally's husband Harold was questioned by police in January 2018. He said investigators questioned him at his request and that they seemed satisfied with what was discussed. Sally's disappearance took a turn for the worse almost three months after she vanished. On March 1, 2018, jail inmate trustees were cleaning trash near Cameron Parish, Louisiana, and discovered a human head in a plastic bag 
along Louisiana Highway 27 between Hackberry and Holly Beach. This is 340 miles from San Antonio and a five and a half hour drive from there and is south of Lake Charles. The location where her head was found is described as a marshy area with tall grass. The marshlands are also home to alligators. Cameron Parish investigators have said it was not unusual to find body parts in the area. The location is popular as a disposal site because of its proximity to the Texas border and alligator population. People choose this area because they figure that the alligators will consume any remains. No gender of the head could be concluded at the time of discovery because of severe decomposition. There also was no evident trauma to the skull, and there were signs of extensive dental work. Cameron Parish Sheriff Ron Johnson stated shortly after the discovery that they do not know where the crime occurred or even what state. He also said that the murder appeared to be personal because of how the remains were disposed of. He thought that the person who did this tried to conceal the identity so that they could not be tracked back to them. DNA was collected but no matches were found. Several pleas to the public were made in the media in hopes of identifying this person. With no leads on the case, the skull was sent to the Louisiana State University Faces Laboratory in 2019. The skull was scanned and a computer-generated composite was created and distributed through the media. Investigators in Cameron Parish also worked on a theory that their severed head was connected to another head found in Texas near Lake Houston around the same time on March 24, 2018. A witness came forward and said that they saw a man in his 20s throw a plastic bag off of a bridge near where the head was found. He was either white or Hispanic and was driving a bluish-green Chevy pickup truck that looked as if it was in a previous wreck. Unfortunately, this tip went nowhere and it is unknown if these cases are connected. Her remains have been sent for DNA testing, but as of now, she is still unidentified. An amateur web sleuth called investigators on May 20th, 2021 and told them that the composite resembled a missing persons flyer for a woman named Sally Hines. Investigators jumped at this tip and compared dental records between the skull and Sally Hines. On May 26, 2021, this was confirmed to be Sally and her family was notified, but they were never given a cause of death. Because the rest of her body was never found, this detail may never be known. But one thing investigators did say after the skull was examined and before it was determined to belong to Sally is that they thought the time of death was about six weeks prior. Sally was last seen on December 14th, 2017, and this would place her time of death around January 18th, 2018. So if this time of death is accurate, where was Sally for the six weeks before her death? According to a February 2022 article by Express News Now, Harold Hines says he does realize he is a suspect because he is her spouse. He also said that he had not been interviewed in four years. Cameron Parish Chief Detective Jake McCain said in the same article that he has sent investigators to San Antonio, but nothing else was discovered. He also said that the San Antonio PD told him that Harold exercised his right to an attorney when he was first questioned in January 2018. But then he went on to say that he might not be entirely correct on this point and told a reporter to confirm with San Antonio PD. Harold has denied this and said that there was no reason for him to consult with an attorney because quote unquote, there was no need to. As of this recording, I am not sure if the Cameron Parish PD ever went back to question Harold Hines or why they would not have attempted to do so when they were in San Antonio. Sally Hines had a life insurance policy from USAA, but in an odd twist, she did not list the beneficiary. In July 2021, Harold Hines submitted a $153,500 claim to Prudential Life Insurance Company. But because he has not been ruled out as a suspect in Sally's murder, he cannot collect on the claim. 
State and federal laws prohibit a beneficiary from collecting a life insurance policy if they are responsible for the insured person's death. This claim would be paid to their daughter if the courts decide that this is the correct course of action. There have not been any other updates about who received the claim or if the issue had been resolved. What happened to Sally Hines? Was her time of death accurate or did she die the night she was last seen? Who was she meeting after she left Harold's house? Why didn't she take her belongings with her? What did Sally's roommate say? Were her friends that she partied with ever questioned? Did she walk away and was abducted by a stranger? Was she murdered in San Antonio? And how did she get to Louisiana? And was she in the area before she was murdered? These are all critical questions that must receive answers before her case is solved. For any tips or information on Sally's case, please contact the Cameron Parish Sheriff's Office at 337-775-5111. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you knew Sally, please share any memories of her and I will see you in my next video.